Ida B. And her plans to maximize fun, avoid disaster, and possibly save the world. For the hills and the trees, the wind and the rivers, and the stars, and for Victor, always. Chapter One Ida B, Mama said to me on one of those days that starts right and just keeps heading towards perfect until you go to sleep. When you're done with the dishes, you can go play. Daddy and I are going to be working till dinner. Yes, ma'am, I said back, but I said it like this. Yes, ma'am, because I couldn't wait to get on with my business. I could already hear the brook calling to me through the back door screen. Come on out and play, Ida B. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. I had three places I wanted to visit and six things I wanted to make and two conversations I hoped to have before dinner time. Mama was washing, Dada was drying, and I was putting away the dishes from lunch. And I knew in that moment I, I set the pan in its place and I was free. But the way those two were chatting and laughing and acting like we all had till next week to finish up, I could see it was going to be a while. My insides started itching and my feet started hopping, one and the other, because they were ten minutes past being ready to go. So I decided to speed things up a bit. Daddy'd hand me a dish and I'd sprint to the cupboard and put it away, race back again and put my hand out for the next one. With my right foot tap, tap, Tapping the seconds that were ticking by. Hold your horses, Ida B., Dad had told me. There pl there's plenty of time to do whatever you're planning. And he passed me a plate, slow and easy. Well, that stopped me in my tracks, because what Daddy said might have seemed all right to him, but it was sitting about two miles beyond wrong with me. I wasn't going to be able to put away another tiny teaspoon till I set things straight. Daddy. I said, and I waited till he was looking at me before I went on. Yes, Ida B., he answered, turning towards me. And, staring right into his eyeballs, I told him, there is never enough time for fun. Daddy's eyes opened wide, and for half a second I wondered if I was in for something close to trouble. But then the two ends of his mouth turned up just a little. Ida B, he told the ceiling while he shook his head. Hmm, Mum B said, like she would, like a smile would if it was sound. And as soon as Daddy handed me the big frying pan, I set it in the drawer next to the oven, and I was on my way. Come on, Rufus, I called to Daddy's old floppy-eared dog who was napping under the table. You can come too, and so you'll have some company. Now, a school of goldfish could go swimming in the pool and of drool that dog makes while he's sleeping. But as soon as he heard his name and saw me heading for outside, he jumped up, cleaned up the extra slobber from his mouth, and in two and one-half seconds' time, he was waiting for me at the back door. <laughs>